still good morning. How are you? Yeah, good, good, good. Wow, it's a big room. Hello in the back. <laughs> okay, so I want to make a, some, as, as interactive as I can, I'm going to ask for raises of the hands and stuff like that. And if you're not cool, that's all right. If you're too shy to raise your hand, it's all good. And um, it's really a delight and a privilege and an honor to be here in my second year in a row. How are we doing with the audio? Hearing okay? Yeah? Anybody not? I'm getting some no's at the back. Higher? Louder, louder. They want louder at the back. Yeah, I know. Labs are not my favorite mics, I gotta tell you. Can I clip it to my lip? No. <laughs> I know. I know, I really prefer the headsets. Um, if I have to, I'll stand at the podium. It's not my preferred method, but um, is that any better? Yeah? It's kind of echoey. I know. Audio, it's so funny because I was like doing video, right? When you do your Facebook Live, it's really important to have good audio. And they have like great little external mics. And, um, you know, but obviously here we are in a live room. Okay, so we're doing okay? Hey, I think I'll go live, speaking of live. Here's one I preferred earlier. Three, two, one. Hello, Facebook! <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go live on my page just for a little bit. Um, now then, if you have not heard me speak before, you'll hear I've got a wee bit of an accent, and uh, so you'll hear me rolling my R's and saying the uh, out and about, and it's all kind of confusing. Well, the out and about part is Canadian. I was born in Canada. Who's my Canadians in the house? Yeah. All right, go Canada. <laughs> They're all like in the front row. <laughs> And uh, then my parents were Scottish and uh, actually uh, I lived 20 years in Edinburgh, Scotland. Anybody in Scotland in the house? Yeah, a couple, maybe. <laughs> and now I live in glorious San Diego, California, and I lived there since 1999. And so I'm kind of Scandifornian, my accent's all over the place, and I get really passionate and enthusiastic about my topic. Absolutely love Facebook, been madly in love with them since May of 2007. Actually, my faceversary, as Facebook calls it, is uh, May the 4th, uh, the Star Wars day <laughs> in 2007. I always remember that. So uh, it's really been an amazing, magical journey, and uh, what happens, as I say, I've got a lot of content for you, and, um, well, we'll just dive in. But uh, the point I was going to make is that sometimes my accent will get a wee bit thickened up and uh, you'll be like waiting for the subtitles. So just we'll put them up for you, okay? <laughs> Look at that. Internet's rubbish. So it's trying to reconnect. So, oh well. Show must go on. So here's what I'm going to walk through today. Facebook TV, like Facebook television, the next generation television. You hear people talk about this. What does that really mean? We'll talk about that. Video and, TV and uh, live. I want to talk about some social video stats and facts. And this is a magical formula I'm going to give you. I sometimes call it the Mari method. And it's how you can get more organic reach with some paid, how they work hand in hand, really in tandem. I call it a wave. As you get more organic reach, then your paid goes up and so on and so forth. It actually, uh, more organic gets more paid, so on and so forth. You get better ROI out of your ads. Video ad best practices, really astounding facts and stacks and tactics, some takeaways for you today and how you can really, really improve your, improve your video ads and get much, much better ROI and reach, what we're talking about. And then Messenger, 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 Messenger. Facebook is absolutely all in on video, especially live, and Messenger. These are our absolute next two trends, if you will. Okay, so moving along, let's jump in. Facebook TV and Messenger. Okay, still hearing an echo, but we're doing okay? Hear me at the back, yeah? Yeah? Good enough? No? I heard someone say no. Huh? Yeah, I don't know what else to do about it. Unless I talk in here. No, see, that's not much better. Unless it's off. Is this on? No, that's not going to work. Well, you know what? I don't even mind holding it. I really don't. Does that work better? It sounds more resonant, doesn't it? I'm going to do this, even though it feels, it feels weird. I, it's so important, like, because it hurts your ears, right? You're, you're going to listen to me for 45 minutes. I want it to be decent. All right, let's jump in. Number one, television versus digital video. What does that mean? Let's see. Facebook, quote, television. Who here follows Scott Monty? You know Scott Monty? No, a few. Oh my gosh, write his name down. Scott, M-O-T-N-Y, Scott Monty, former head of social for Forward. Really, really brilliant guy, and he writes a newsletter called The Full Monty. He does his Facebook Lives to show everybody, uh, you know, the latest, greatest trends and everything. 
I'm referring Scott because he wrote a wonderful post talking about how Facebook Live is basically the rebirth, the rebirth of television, right? Back in what, the 19, whenever it was, 40s, 50s, when the TV first came out, it was all live. You couldn't watch anything. You couldn't watch anything. Um, this is might not gonna work. I'm gonna put it back. Try that, sorry folks. Um, you couldn't watch anything, right? Before VCRs and recorders and DVRs and whatever, right? It was all live, you had to watch live. And so now it's, it's really like a rebirth. If we think of it that way, Facebook Live, the rebirth of television. Now then, I wanna walk through, this is kind of small print, I've got the, I've broken it down for you in the next slide. But what this is, is the change in time spent watching traditional TV versus digital, right? So, television versus digital video. Time spent watching, now everybody knows, okay, everybody's watching more digital video, right? It's up uh, to 47% up in, over the last five years from 32, and of course TV's going down, 35% uh, down from 41 in 2011, but we really need to watch the demographics, the age group that uh, you are, are reaching, your target demographics, all right? So look at this by age group. Age 65 and up, right, your boomers and whatnot, they're actually watching more television, holy smokes. 7% increase, age 35 to 49, 10% decrease, and this next one is astounding. 18 to 24, 38% decrease in watching television over um, digital video. Uh, except this, this uh, senior citizen here, she's all hip and trendy, she's, she's doing some, some uh, uh, <laughs> virtual reality, right, where all our buddies are around the TV. <laughs> so. Um, we really want to be watching this. This is one of my favorite slides. This is actually, I'm going to show you the percentage share in 2016 of downstream traffic on the internet. Leading the way is Netflix, right? 35% share of downstream. Next up, oh, hello, music. <laughs> uh, YouTube is the second with 17%. All right, now then, next one is Amazon Video. And this is a wee number. Only 4%, you say, okay, only 4%, but check this out. Doubled, it doubled in one year. From 2015 to 2016, doubled. We're gonna keep an eye. Who here has Amazon Prime? And you watch it? Yeah, I love it. Bye-bye, cable. <laughs> I call up Cox, right, and the guy's like trying to persuade me. He's like, but Mari, he's like, how, how are you gonna get your news? Eh, I'm like, Facebook? And he's like, kind of like muffled a chuckle. <laughs> but, um, one of the reasons I put this slide up here, because I want us to think about in the coming years, in the coming one to three to five years, guess what? We're gonna see Facebook on here. We're gonna see Facebook Live in this cluster of downstream traffic on the internet. That's certainly what Facebook wants to go, right? You got a television. Facebook Live is really where the first screen and the second screen are merging and becoming one, right? And that's an advertiser's dream. This is a 10-year roadmap that was released in uh, April of this year at the annual F8 conference. And it's really fascinating to see. I'm focusing primarily today on Facebook uh, video and messenger, okay? So you're familiar with the Facebook earlier this year, Mark Zuckerberg posted that they have since opened up their largest hardware manufacturing. I mean, they're making obviously, you know, all kinds of VR stuff and drones and uh, satellites. Uh, who knows, maybe the Facebook phone one day will come out. <laughs> who knows? So uh, uh, Facebook stock, um, really, really, uh, you know, strong on uh, their long-term investment and the company is just going from strength to strength. So let's look at these uh, video stats. Now then, uh, my good friends at Brightcove, social video generates 1,200% more shares than text and image combined. How many of you are using video in your marketing? Fabulous, okay, good, good, good. I'm seeing maybe that was maybe about a third to a half at most. This is, um, I've got some, some more really awesome things to share on uh, Facebook video, uh, video marketing. So uh, one more for you, 79% of all global consumer internet traffic will come from video by 2018. This is by Cisco, I mean, that's astounding to me. That's not that far away, right? It's uh, basically a year and a half or something, a year and a bit. And four times as many consumers would rather watch a video about a product than read about it. These are my good friends at Animoto. Animoto is a wonderful uh, video creation tool. I've got some, some cool videos to show you about that and how to do it and whatnot. So uh, I think this is really interesting. Um, I actually personally, I'm a skimmer. I like, to see, I like to see if there's text. My eyeballs will just go skim, skim, skim. And I would rather do that than watch a video. By show of hands, how many of you, with this stat here, would you rather watch a video? 
than read. Okay, great. And then who would rather read? Yeah, you're my peeps. <laughs> Here's the challenging thing though. See, we as marketers, as business owners, we're like, well, I prefer to read. I'm gonna focus more on text. You know, and businesses are posting about 80% links still on, on Facebook. And I've got, I've got a slide to show you that in a moment. So it's really important that we actually do the research and study like uh, Animoto did here, that the consumers would rather watch a video. They would rather be informed by a video. Uh, there's a dedicated video tab. Now then, this screenshot I have over on the right, see that bottom left, the wee blue button, it's the play button. How many of you have that on your phone now, the video play button? Yeah, hardly anybody. You know what, did they replace it with Marketplace? Who has Marketplace? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, but I just don't like it. Was a, supposedly a Craigslist competitor. Uh, I'm not big on the, on the Marketplace, but I, I really strongly see that at the beginning of this year, Facebook was really wanting to push this play feature, a dedicated video tab. Why? Because guess what? Summer of next year, summer of 2017, Facebook's actually going to, quote, run out of ad inventory in the newsfeed. Right? They're gonna reach their max for space. So they're obviously gonna look for other ways to, to monetize. One way is having a dedicated video newsfeed. And another way is obviously Messenger. Groups app, they just spun off the events app. Um, so five years from now, your newsfeed will probably be all video. That was from Nicola Mendelssohn, and she's the VP for Facebook for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. By the way, I, I just if you're not familiar with my bio, super 30 seconds, is that I've been involved with Facebook since May of 2007, I said that earlier. Uh, absolute evangelist, passionate about the company. And then last year, Facebook actually hired me and I went out on tour with the company to teach small businesses Facebook marketing. One of the biggest challenges that Facebook has especially in the SMB market, is education. The products are moving so dang fast to be able to actually understand what's available in the advertising options, and there's like so many choices, hundreds, almost thousands of choices it finds, it feels like. And so it's so important for us as business people, for you, for it to educate your clients so they really understand what's available to them. And hopefully by the end of my session, you'll have more ideas as well. Okay, so we've talked quite a bit about video. I'm really strong on video, obviously. Facebook is favoring video in the newsfeed, favoring live in the newsfeed, uh, except for my live is still trying to reconnect, so sorry, people. <laughs> um, yeah, they are giving priority treatment, if you will, priority to video in the newsfeed, especially live. I'm sure you've seen an increase of live videos, right? So-and-so is now live. You'll see that in your mobile newsfeed and your desktop newsfeed. By the way, of the 1.8 billion active Facebook users, 90% access predominantly on their mobile devices. In fact, I saw a stat somewhere that oh, 40, some 40% 40 of Facebook users have never accessed on desktop. They only ever access on mobile. Now those might be in some of your more developing countries and whatnot where they don't even have uh, a desktop, they don't have a computer, they do everything on mobile, right? Now then, here's my organic paid wave, as I sometimes call the Mari method. First, you must build some organic traction, even though, sadly, Facebook organic reach is down to something like one to 6%. On average, one or between one and six out of every 100 people is seeing your post organically in the newsfeed, unless you just happen to be really lucky and have a crazy viral and highly engaged page for most businesses, about one to six percent. However, there are ways that you can start to get some organic traction. Your, or, your paid reach will go further when you've given it some organic reach with your, and then you add your zuck boxes I've got there. <laughs> um, now then, um, what happens is that for me personally, I don't always like to have every post I make having a little sponsored label on it, right? Because people see that, it's in their newsfeed, most consumers are gonna be savvy and they say, okay, that's his sponsored, Mari's paid to, to have this, to have me read this. I like to let it get maybe between one and 24 hours, some organic reach, so then when I go to promote it, it might have some engagement, right? Likes, comments, and shares. Shares are the holy grail. Shares are to Facebook as retweet is to Twitter. Your goal with your content is to make it highly shareable. That's your number one factor. You put it out to your audience, you think, would my fans love this? Would they love it? Are they gonna look good in front of their audience when they share it? Make sense? So they'll, oh, love it. Gotta share it. Now, so I call it to say, Mari Method. 
publish highly compelling content. Facebook actually calls it thumb stopping, right? Those users going through their newsfeed on that mobile. Oh, thumb stopping. Now, what I put here, minimize your ask, what I mean by that is that you don't want to be imagining that people are actually going to share your promotional content, your content with calls to action, your content that's you know, asking people to do business with you, which you should, but ideally in a ratio of five to one. Is somebody raising their hand out there or you're just waving? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, five to one is my, is my recommended ratio. Everybody, everybody, I highly recommend that you consider yourself in the business of education, educational content, tips. It can be an informing and an entertaining. People love to be entertained, made to laugh, cry, go off. There's a reason that Facebook brought out all these reaction buttons, right? So ideally minimizing your ask. So you're creating this highly shareable, awesome content. People love it, they share it. It's uh, maximize organic reach between one and 24 hours. Uh, engage with people as they're engaging. Something I see few businesses do is actually getting in there and acknowledging people when they share your content. It's kind of like not always intuitive, but you go and you have to do on desktop and you see who's shared your post and you just pop on there as your page. You hire someone to do that, or someone on your community building team. And then you intersperse it, like I say, with some boosted content. Now, I do not recommend using the boost button. Facebook shoves that boost button literally in front of us every time we go near it. Hey, this post is doing 97% better than all your other ones. Give us some money and we'll promote it some more. And I, you know, I don't mean to be flippant about it. The boost button does definitely have its place. It's good for when you're on the fly, you're on mobile, you want to just get a quick lift. Boost button tends to perform best when you use it in conjunction with two things. Number one, saved audiences. Right? So create your saved audiences first, over there in your audiences and your ads manager. Then when you want to use the boost button, click your appropriate saved audience. And number two, I've heard this from inside of Facebook, that all ads will perform better when they're connected to the Facebook pixel, even boosted posts. So if you have a Facebook pixel, everybody has a Facebook pixel. If you don't know about it, you've got to get in there. Find out about the Facebook pixel, put that wee piece of code on your website, your clients, those of you who done for you, who do done for you, and, and your content, your boosted, your promoted content on Facebook will perform better when you have a active Facebook pixel. And then what I call ride the wave, what that means is that let's just say you had $500 for a promotional campaign for one of your posts. You don't just say, hey, Facebook, here's my 500 bucks, off, have, have at it. You're gonna take that money and you're maybe gonna divide it up into five buckets. And you start out and you're gonna split test it. You do 100 bucks and you see how that goes. You ride that wave, as I say. I mean, you might literally press uh, pause on the campaign and let it get some more, more organic traction, some more shares, add some more money. And I've got some clear examples to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about in a moment. What it does is you're literally training the algorithms. The moment that you start giving Facebook money, the ad algorithms go, uh-huh. We got someone here that would like to give us money, let's help them. The boost button, however, like I say, is actually treated as a lightweight ad interface. The ad algorithms know, ah, oh, boost, ooh, now this person's using Ads Manager, and of course those of you who use Power Editor, you are treated in a whole other category that they know, Facebook knows you are a Power user when you use Power Editor, okay? And then intersperse with your ass. So as you're getting that nice lift in your organic and paid traction, with your highly shareable educational tips-based content, then you can intersperse with some calls to action and some business posts. Of course, you can also at any time do dark posts, right? They'll unpublished posts, which are posts in the newsfeed as a paid piece of content, look like a wall post, but are not actually on your wall. You can only create them inside of the ads manager or power editor. Okay, okay. So as I, sometimes I think about it like stepping on the gas pedal. That when I said give it hundred dollars, ease back, let it let it gain traction, uh, ease off the gas, and press the gas some more. Okay. Here's my number one content creation tip, as I call it. Your audience needs to feel compelled to share it. 
Okay, thumb stopping. Facebook calls it thumb stopping. You craft your content for maximum shares. When you think, you imagine your audience looking at their thumb, 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 thumb. Whoa, oh my goodness, I must share this now. And what kind of reaction will it get from them, right? What kind of reaction will your uh, post get? Now then, um, let's see what else I was going to say about that. Feels compelled to share. Yep, reactions. Okay, I think I got all the points. They'll come back to me. Uh, and here, of course, is Zuck and Priscilla and we, Max. You know that's so what they're They want you to share like crazy. <laughs> it's all about the share button. OK, so here's an example from one of my clients. Now, that I work with a, a number of different uh, industries. Like, uh, right now, I'm doing a lot with the beauty industry, hair, just speaking at a hair show in Las Vegas on Monday. Uh, this particular client I'm going to show you is a startup in the cosmetics and skincare industry and direct sales. Uh, they came to me last year and asked me to uh, create their social strategy and then they were not going to be ready to launch products until October 1st. So my team and I built them what's called a passion page. And you can have highly shareable content with passion pages because they're interest based, they're passion based. It's just a Facebook page. You don't go and say, where do I create a passion page? So we called this one All Things Gorgeous. The name of the actual makeup company is Mayel. But we call this page All Things Gorgeous and this was one of our runaway winner posts uh, one of the girls on the team created it, Fifty Shades of Nude. She says, anyone else is obsessed with nude shades as I am? And at the time, well, my, my team and I built them a fan, a fan page with 150,000 fans in about four months. And this post here, as you see, got 2.4 million reach. It's a startup in direct sales, as I say. They're in pre-launch, 120. They now have over 150, 160. This post got over 2 million. Uh, and guess what? Their goal was to have 1,000 distributors by October 1st. We have helped them through this process to 5x their goal. They actually have 5,000 distributors. And on this post here, if you can do the math, 22,000 shares. That's on a page with, at the time, I had 150,000 fans, 120. And three cents a share is about $600 using that Mari method where we give a little budget, let it sit, a little more, let it sit. And then when you've got that, that Facebook algorithms are, are kind of beefed up, if you will, now you can intersperse with your asks. And all, another thing with this passion page concept is that we've created this fan page with a 98% uh, demographic match. 98% match is the exact target demographic that the, the, the customer is looking for. That's the beauty of creating a page like that from the, scra from the scratch, if you will. Uh, really nicely done. Uh, so using my amplification formula, I sometimes call it, it gets the high, highest ROI with the lowest cost, actually lowers your ad dollars, uh, or ad cost, excuse me, when you use this method. Maximize your shares, uh, you're working with the algorithm and increasing the horsepower of your ads, as I say, using that formula as I just gave you. The, give, it, give it some organic reach, up to 24 hours, drip feed your budget, uh, five to one ratio of educational to uh, promotional, and when you've got that lifted, elevated reach, then you slip in your calls to action. <laughs> uh, another one, an example. I always say you want to be a helpful specialist. You want to be a specialist, not a generalist. You want to go an inch wide and a mile deep. Now then, earlier this year, when Facebook has their newsfeed FYI, it's a portion on their blog, and anytime they have any updates to the algorithm, they post it out on the newsfeed alg uh, FYI segment. This was back in July, and, and it was when Facebook said they were going to favor posts by friends and family in the newsfeed. And the first time ever I saw where they always do at the bottom, will this affect the reach on my fan page? And guess what? They actually did it. They said, will this impact my page? And this time they said, yes. We anticipate this update may cause reach and referral traffic to decline for some pages. And so whilst all my peers and people in the industry and whatnot are, are sharing the same post, I'm like, okay, how can I be helpful? How can we add value? How can I help uh, my audience to overcome this challenge? And so what I did is I created this video with some tips. So a helpful specialist adds value. Let's take a look at the video. Uh, how can you educate your audience? Here it goes. What 
worked about that. By the way, shout out for Animoto, full disclosure, and brand ambassador for them, as well as Adobe Spark, awesome, awesome video creation tools. That whole video was just created using Animoto, super, super easy. You gotta design them for sound off. You'll notice that I only had a tiny wee clip in there of me talking, otherwise it was all designed for sound off. 80% of video ads are watch muted. So we gotta to put to captions or subtitles or uh, lower thirds. So what worked in this case is I'm creating compelling content that's obviously highly shareable, it's timely, it's relevant, I did promote it when using that Mari method. You can see how much organic. It's almost one at uh, two thirds uh, organic and one third posted. Over 200,000 reach, 47,000 views, and a lot of shares. So that's using that methodology. And timing on these circumstances is really is everything. When you've got something like a breaking news or a trending topic, it's like, okay, how can I think outside the box? What are all my peers doing? What, I can, what can I do differently? How can I create video content? You know, it absolutely amazes me how many companies out there, video companies, and media companies posting about video, they still do it with links. Now anytime I'm ever creating some content about video, I make a video about it to post it on Facebook because that's gonna get you that better reach. Make sense? Okie dokie, let's talk about Facebook. And I put parentheses because this is your, face, this is your video best practices and I put ad because I, I absolutely strongly encourage you one of your golden rules for creating all content to share on social but certainly on Facebook is would you be willing to put budget behind it if it's not boost worthy as we call it it's not worthy of putting some budget behind it frankly I mean I don't mean to push on you but I'm like well why post it really I mean maybe it's just filler content wherever but it really needs to be worthy of promoting okay so uh, this is a study by my good friends at Buffer. And Buffer studied uh, 100,000 brands, 6 million Facebook posts, and you can see the runaway winner is video posts. Video posts get three times the engagement than link posts, and two times the engagement than photo posts. It's absolutely astounding, uh, in fact, what's happening with uh, video on Facebook. But let's look at this next slide. Video posts on Facebook, what Buffer found in this study early this year is actually largely underutilized. Even though Facebook's getting a, a video that's getting three times engagement, of the average seven posts a, a week, obviously roughly once a day, that these brands are posting, 80% of them are still links. 19% uh, photos, and watch this my friends, less than 1%, it's actually 58%, excuse me, 0.58, 0 0.58. You see that wee yellow sliver there? This is what I like to say to my audiences is, how exciting is that for you guys? You savvy marketers, you savvy business owners, that wee yellow sliver of pie, that is your window of opportunity to jump in and start showing up more on the newsfeed and being seen more because not enough businesses and brands yet are publishing video content, all right? so. Let's look at a couple more stats and facts here. Who here is, knows uh, Mary Meeker, Internet Trends? Hardly anybody? Holy smokesers. Okay, another person for you to follow. Mary Meeker, every single year, she does this extraordinary compilation with like a hundred page, hundreds of pages of uh, slides, and then she delivers it as a, a report. This is at the Recode, you can see that on YouTube. And she said in this, this year's Internet Trends, as I mentioned earlier, over 80% of users mute video ads. And she said that many online ads are ineffective, especially video, and that online ad efficacy has a long way to go. So, to make this point even further, she said, if there's ever been a call to arms to create better ads, this is it, this is it. Contextual, relevant, highly shareable, entertaining, educational, short, Okay, I've got some examples coming up. She said, Mary Meeker, in her report this year, study Snapchat ads. Who here is on Snapchat? Oh, wee, coolio. All right, I'm still, I'm still on the fence. No, <laughs> I have a Snapchat. I haven't fully embraced it yet, I must say. Kudos to y'all that are embracing it because it's certainly not going anywhere. And even though Facebook's tried to buy it a few times and Facebook keeps having Snapchat envy and bringing out features that are Snapchat-esque, <laughs> right? And new camera, new filters, you name it. Uh, you know, the demographic that loves Snapchat are staying very loyal to Snapchat. And I love what Mary Meeker said. She says some of the best ads are on Snapchat. They tend to be authentic, entertaining, in context, 
and often brief. And she cited an example from Spotify, 26 million views, and not too bad at all. So uh, one more quote here from Business Insider. Video ads have an average click-through rate of 1.84%. It's actually the highest click-through rate of all digital ad formats, which is, again, another strong argument um, for using video, obviously, in your paid content. Let's look at some specific elements of what makes great video ads. Uh, and I'll show you an example, a couple examples of that. Quality from the first frame. Three seconds, right? Three seconds counts as a video view on Facebook. I know they've had some negative publicity this year about how they count their video views. Uh, I'm pretty sure on YouTube, I think it's as much as 30 seconds. Uh, it's definitely a lot more than Facebook counts. Needs to be authentic. High energy and entertaining, if possible. It evokes emotion. Personable, relatable, useful, right? And designed for sound off. I literally troll my Facebook video newsfeed. I will click on a video and then I'll just kind of binge watch. And every third one is always an ad. Every third one's an ad. And I, I, what I do is I take a screenshot, like in C, you see here with my friends at Mind Valley, take a screenshot and then I press that wee gray arrow to the right of the ad and I will hit save video. Then I'll go back and study it, and I will see, okay, what worked, what caught my attention, what didn't work, and I really study uh, these video ads. So here's, I thought this was a really decent example. Play the video for you. Oh yeah, add lower thirds and captions, if, captions if it's somebody talking, all right? Is it impossible to fit meditation into your schedule? Are you unsure of how to get started or simply can't focus? We're Mind Valley, and we're giving away a free five-day meditation course designed to help you overcome any meditation challenge. You'll also receive a 15-minute track created with our advanced sound technology. It will alter your brain waves, help you relax instantly, and give you laser-like focus in just minutes a day. So click to register now and discover the secret to great meditation. Now, what worked about this ad I like is really clever text animation. We didn't have to have the audio on, right? She has a nice voice and it worked to obviously augment the ad. It was short and sweet and on point and well targeted. So um, it doesn't, see, you don't need a lot of fancy equipment. You don't have to have lights, camera, action, all that. You, you don't want to. You can put some animated text and off you go. Native video ads. Now then, I've got a really awesome example uh, for you here. My good friend, Ezra Firestone. Anybody here know Ezra? Yeah, 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 good, a few of you. He's amazing, you definitely wanna study smartmarketer.com. Uh, he's an e-commerce wizard. Uh, he has smartmarketer.com as his digital marketing firm and then he also is partners in a cosmetic company uh, called Boom, Boom by Cindy Joseph. It's a cosmetic skincare line aimed at uh, baby boomers. Um, so, in fact, I put conversation asset, and I know it's a bit of a typo, it's actually conversion asset, but they're kind of part of the same family, conversation, conversion. <laughs> so, co uh, co funnel conversion. Ezra, this video example I'm gonna show you, um, well, actually, I'm showing you the stats of it, I don't have the video of it. 26 million views per Facebook, what did I say? Three seconds, right? Three seconds, so he, the Facebook's telling him, hey, you got uh, tw uh, 26 million views. Watch this, Ezra's, breakdown as he calls it true views true views and he called 1.3 million now that's a lot of money just by some by some budgets but he invested 500,000 half million dollars uh, his uh, cosmetic company I know is doing eight figures so for him positive ROI uh, in these Facebook video ads he has a sequence right he'll do a lot of retargeting and he uses the videos to drive people back to the website, consume blog content, cookie them, retarget them. And what I'm gonna show you in the next slide is video retargeting. So 500,000 uh, in Facebook video ads at 36 cents a view. And Ezra, how he counts them, Facebook says three seconds. Guess what? 75%. Now that's four minutes. So it was a five and a half minute video and then he did retargeting, okay? It's, in, it's under custom audiences. You go to ads manager or your power editor, custom audiences, engagement audiences, relatively new feature. And you can create lists of engagement audiences, people who've engaged with your lead ad, your canvas, uh, or your video. And what a fairly new one, it's not out yet, is you, you can retarget people who've shared your content on Facebook, like shared your URL. I think that one is super exciting. So what Ezra said, this is astounding, five and a half minute video, he said, where else on the planet could you get a captive audience 
watching four minutes of your video content for 36 cents. It's astounding, really. It's amazing. You really know what you're doing. Here's the slide I was talking about with the engagement cost of audiences. You, can, you want to start at a minimum of 10 seconds. Frankly, I wouldn't necessarily retarget people with three seconds because that's, that's, you know, who knows if they're really absolutely watching it, right? Because that's the autoplay and how Facebook counts it. But as you see, you can go all the way up to 95%. Now, obviously, if you did something like a, a Facebook Live through a third-party app through your desktop, there's some really awesome tools coming out. Uh, shout out to Blue Jeans Network. Uh, they're doing multi-person Facebook Live. You can have up to nine people doing a Facebook Live. And uh, there's also a Wirecast, which I love, uh, and OBS is a free one. So uh, if you were doing like a full on you know, hour presentation, you would not target 95%. You might target maybe uh, 25%. And then you get a really engaged audience. Uh, and we'll to another slide here. 96% of consumers find videos helpful. We talked about that earlier. When making purchase decisions, again, even though us skimmers in the room, we like to skim text, we've got to cater to the video audience. Here's one more example for you. This is actually a wonderful example of a video ad. West Virginia skydivers. Let's take a look at what they did. Love it. Who else in the room has skydived? Anyone? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, loud and proud. I have in my 20s. Yeah, I jumped out of a perfectly good airplane about six times. <laughs> that thing that just feels like a backpack, right, on, the, on your back, you, that, that thing is going to save your life. I had the static line where it's clipped into the plane, and then you leap. You just leap a phase, not this tandem where you're strapped to somebody. And then apparently every swear word I've ever known in my life came flying out my mouth, and they could hear me down on the ground, <laughs> like 2,000 feet or something. But I love that. It's exhilarating, right? So let's take a look at what these guys did. Let's look at before and after. Before, this is average per week, average per week, okay? So they're getting roughly 20 calls a week, six bookings a week, website visits about 205, of which 12% from Facebook. After they ran this simple, simple ad using you know, photo and video clips they had already, uh, they got 94 calls, 79 came from Facebook. 49 bookings and 1,267 website visits, 42 from Facebook. Now then, 5x increase in calls, 6x in websites, and 8x increase in bookings. Average booking of a skydive tandem is about $250, 220, excuse me. Uh, so they've got those 49 bookings, 10.7K, 10, 10 right? Guess how much, I actually don't have it on the slide, but guess how much they spent for that ad? $115. That's all. Promoted it for 115 bucks. Uh, I've got 40 shares, 3,000 views, and so who, you know, who wouldn't want to turn almost 100, just over 100 bucks into over 10,000? Really nicely done, just by using uh, video. Compelling message. Now then, our final point here, I want to really bring it home with the power and importance of using Messenger in your marketing, of encouraging inbound messages from your audience. So Facebook, not long ago, they introduced a fairly new feature where when people commenting on your posts, one of the options you can like and reply, but you can also private message, right? You can only private message if they have first commented or if they've messaged your page. Now, I highly recommend that you regularly encourage your audience to private message you. That's almost as good as having their cell phone number. Now you're in a one-on-one -on -one dialogue. Now you can build intimacy and personalize some of your content and your communication. Of course, marry that with bots, okay? So Facebook Messenger, uh, one billion active users, chats overtaken SMS, 60 billion messages a day between Messenger WhatsApp versus 20 SMS, 20 billion. It's absolutely astounding. Facebook wants Messenger to be your 1-800 number, literally. It wants you to think of your uh, Messenger as your 1-800 number. Of the top, most popular apps in the world, Facebook owns five of them, uh, excuse me, four of the five, four of the top five, uh, WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, and Instagram. And for business, you can go to messenger.com business and find out more about integrating and doing your bots 
Uh, I just was reading with the new Messenger 3.0, they have um, uh, deep linking, deep linking, m.me, like way deep into your website. You can do deep linking that when people click, they're going to private message you exactly about that product or that, that specific content on that web page of your website, uh, page of your site. Bots plus humans. Bots are not meant to overtake and replace the human interaction, the personalization. Facebook says Messenger is instant, it's interactive, it's personal, it's proactive. Okay? And number one question for retailers is where's my package? Which is obviously a wonderful one that you can integrate with bots and integrate with uh, tracking and shipping on those of you that uh, do retail. All right? So really good stuff that you can do integrating. Who can tell me what that uh, logo is? WeChat. My friends here in the Western world, although we may have some folks from Asia and, and overseas, I don't know, but WeChat, we got to keep over here in America, we got to keep an eye on what China's WeChat is doing. It's absolutely amazing. China's WeChat is light years ahead of messaging apps. In fact, they do not call it even a messaging app. It's an online, uh, excuse me, it's a mobile operating system, a mobile oper operating system. It is Facebook and Instagram and Tinder and PayPal and Google and Amazon and Skype all and Venmo all in one app. I mean, that's an advertiser's dream, right? Okay, you're like, okay, of course it's China. Uh, actually, let me just finish making one more point about that. Um, the only, actually I saw a, a keynote by the CEO of Booking.com was speaking at a, a, one of a conference earlier this year. And he said that the only two apps that can remotely keep up or compete with China's WeChat in the Western world are WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. I have heard from reliable sources that Facebook is actually holding back on how much they could be accelerating the rollout and the growth of features, especially around Messenger. They don't want to overwhelm and freak people out, right? But they have got their eye on the prize, and I have also seen and heard that Facebook and Instagram claim to only be 1% done. That's what they're saying, we're 1% done. Whoa, what does that say about where they're heading, right? So, in summary, I just wanna pop this up here. These are all the different brands I work with. I travel around the US and the world and speaking and training a variety of large brands, small businesses, evangelizing. I love being a brand ambassador. Uh, LS Retail there, I was in Rome earlier this year uh, addressing a conference. So if they do point of sale, one of the largest point of sale companies in the world and uh, really great array of wonderful companies that I love working with. Let's just summarize what we covered here today. If you take nothing more away from this session, you must create better video ads. In fact, create more video, period. <laughs> with lower thirds, with captions, entertaining. Oh, I forgot to tell you. If you haven't yet, look up uh, chat books. Make a note of that, chat books, chat books. On Facebook, they have like just over 60,000 fans. They created one of the best video ads I have ever seen. It is hilarious. It's like watching a little uh, episode on a sitcom. It's so funny. And they have the lower thirds. It's beautifully done. And they make, they make these little photograph books where you can have, like for your kids, you print Instagram or Facebook photos and you have a little photo book. And uh, it was so funny. It was, almost, it was over three minutes long. I watched the whole thing. It's had over, last time I looked, at 13 million views. 13 million, who wanted 13 million views on an ad? on a page that only has 60,000 fans. In addition, study Snapchat for your video ads. Create thumb-stopping content, educational thinking, how will this benefit my audience? How will my audience love to share with their audience and make them look good? And developing your video and your Facebook Live plan. How many of you use Facebook Live? Coolio, all the people at the front. <laughs> That's awesome, that's great. The challenge, the challenge with Facebook Live is being able to come up with really good content that people love and want to engage with and want to share, right? Uh, as opposed to, you know, just popping on Facebook Live and go, hey, I saw yesterday, I went live at Boston Airport. I couldn't believe it. I got off at the luggage carousel, giant billboard, Facebook Live. Now, I do know that they're investing in doing an international uh, advertising on buses, TV, and billboards to promote Facebook Live. So. And then ride the wave, as I call it, that organic page uh, and reach and paid uh, wave Mari method methodology. And master messenger, make sure you add messenger, encourage inbound messaging, 
encourage people to use Messenger. It is absolutely where we want to be keeping our eyes on. And we are at the end of our session. If you've got any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. I'm here for the rest of the today and tomorrow. I hope you got value. I love you. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you.